everybody! Welcome to this video explaining Brooklyn Cop by Norman McCaig with me, Miss AB. Let's get going. Okay, first, let's read over the poem. Built like a gorilla, but less timid. Thick-fleshed, steak-coloured, with two hieroglyphs in his face that mean trouble. He walks the sidewalk and the thin tissue over violence. This morning, when he said, see you, babe, to his wife, he hoped it. He truly hoped it. He is a gorilla to whom hiya honey is no cliche. Should the tissue tear, should he plunge through into violence, what clubbings, what gunshots between Phoebe's Wamburger and Louis's place? Who would be him, gorilla with a nightstick, whose home is a place he might this time never get back to? And who would be who have to be his victims? Okay, so we're going to go through stanza by stanza and look at the key elements. So built like a gorilla, we start off with a strong simile showing that the cop is animalistic. Uh, sorry, I can spell. <laughs> and... Nimalistic. And dangerous. less timid thick fleshed steak colored we've got these two uses of really strong word choice um which show that he is sort of unattractive and um sort of implies like quite robust unhurtable like strong we start off with this very like threatening character who we don't particularly sympathize with Two hieroglyphs in his face were given this metaphor for his eyes. He is unreadable, which adds to the threat, right? If you can't read in someone's eyes what they are thinking and what they are feeling, that feels quite threatening. So the cop is threatening because his eyes are like ancient um, writing that is unreadable, that mean trouble. You've got to bear in mind as well, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of enjambment in this poem. Which just creates suspense and tension throughout. He walks the sidewalk and the thin tissue over violence. This is a metaphor. Thin tissue shows how weak and fragile peace and stability is. Um, he hoped it, he truly hoped it, we're given, ooh, go back, we're given this repetition, showing his desperation, he is a gorilla, now we've switched from a simile to a metaphor, it's a stronger comparison, we're strengthening that idea that he is an animal that he is dangerous, that he is sort of subhuman in a way, to whom hiya honey is no cliche. This bit just tells us that he is, like he has an inferior intellect, right? He isn't very intelligent because he doesn't have sort of the subtlety to realize that what he's saying is a cliche. Um, okay, should the tissue tear? So we've got alliteration of that sharp T sound. And that is emphasizing this sort of danger moment, right? If things do kick off, should that tissue tear? Which is likely, right? Remember that tissues tearing, not that difficult. Should he plunge through? This is word choice. It is this deep, irreparable fall. If you plunge, you are falling a long way down, right? So if this moment happens where things kick off, it's going to be very hard to come back from. What clubbings, what gunshots? We've got the repetition. Emphasising the amount of violence that will occur. Between Phoebe's Wamburger and Louis' place. Here we've got word choice. 
This kind of demonstrates to us that the area that the cop is working in is um, sort of a criminal mobster kind of area. It's not a pleasant suburb where he's working. It is a place steeped in violence. Um, and again, we have enjambment here as well, creating more of that suspense. suspense. So, who would be him, Gorilla with a Nightstick, whose home is a place this time he might never get back to? This whole thing is a rhetorical question. Right? Asking us, would you swap places with him? And if the answer is no, the implication is that we should feel sorry for him. So, it elicits sympathy. Um, gorilla with a nightstick, we've got the metaphor coming back, now he's armed, right? Before he was like a gorilla, then he was a gorilla, and now he's a gorilla with a nightstick, armed with a weapon. So, it's just deepening that, that sense of violence and danger perpetrated by the cop. Um, and nightsticks are particularly brutal and sort of fundamentally like uncivilized weapons it's just a stick that you're hitting someone with so it's not very refined it's not a gun it's not something with complexity um it's this very simplistic weapon whose home is a place and again this emphasizing home is a place and we've got the enjambment it has the added sort of threat of loss and the word home it elicits that sympathy again this time in particular this time is every time by the nature of the phrasing this time it's every single time he leaves it might be the last time he can come home and we know from the way he speaks to his wife that he likes to be at home he has that loving side to him so then this stanza makes us feel sorry for him because he has the potential to lose a lot Okay, and who would ha who would be who have to be his victims? This final rhetorical question reverses that last stanza. Loss of sympathy, or at least a pulling back, right? If you're gonna feel sorry for him because because he might never get make it home again, well, reminder he has victims and he shouldn't, which is a word choice. Um, he is the perpetrator of violence, not just the victim of it, right? So that tells us that the cop is also part of the problem. Okay, the plot of this poem is quite straightforward. The speaker tells us about a police officer in New York who is immersed in violence and surrounded by perpetual threat. He is shown to be a perpetrator of violence as well as the victim of the situation he has found himself in. He is surrounded by threat and danger and therefore we can feel sympathy for him, but he also does some of the, the damage himself. He has a warm and loving relationship with his wife, though he is of a lower intelligence. Not than her, we're not shown that, but he doesn't seem to be intelligent enough to have like a really cerebral relationship with her. Um, but it's still shown to be like the light part of his life that is kind of almost his more natural state in a way. And the speaker moves from one side to the other in terms of sympathy. We're given the idea that this cop is thuggish and dangerous and we shouldn't want to be anywhere near him. And then we're told that actually he's also the victim of quite a, a threatening series of events and you start to feel sorry for him. And then we're reminded that he also causes danger himself and we're removed from that sympathy. So we're shown both sides. The characters. We are given the cop himself, his wife... We're given the speaker, who is, again, Norman McCaig, viewing this through his kind of lens, um, and the threat of criminals. I think you can't overlook the idea that um, Phoebe's uh, Wambo and Louis' place and the, the idea of the people around him are part of what caused this situation. So these are the main characters within this poem. The themes. We are given the classic of civilization versus nature. This idea of a gorilla in an urban environment, incredibly dangerous, incredibly threatening, but is it inherently dangerous? Are gorillas of themselves bad? No. 
but a gorilla within an urban environment, very, very toxic combination. Uh, we're given the theme of violence, that idea of the tissue tearing, that violence always being on the edge of occurring. Power and authority, the idea of being this um, authority within a sphere where you are supposed to protect and instead you are unreadable, you are dangerous, you are the perpetrator of violence. We are shown responsibility. The cop does not do what he is asked to do in, in the respect that he does not protect and serve. He has victims. That's not right. Um, and family. This idea that family brings out the best in people. The softer side of the cop is brought out through his wife. Techniques. The keyest key ones for these are enjambment, right? This poem is filled with ends of lines that do not show the end of a thought creating this suspense he's constantly in threat and in danger and we don't know what's going to happen from one line to the next and the enjambment helps to heighten that sense of tension uh, imagery was shown that idea of him going from the simile of being like a gorilla to being a gorilla to being a gorilla with a nightstick and word choice as well so the key quotations for this, if you can only remember five, try and make it these five. Built like a gorilla, simile, his strength and it's dehumanizing him. He is strong and powerful and animalistic. Uh, he walks the sidewalk and the thin tissue over violence. We've got this metaphor, the fragility of peace, how easily it will be to break into utter sort of anarchy, chaos, violence. Um, he is a gorilla. The metaphor comes through and it's even stronger and it's even more dehumanising than before. Who would be him? Gorilla with a nightstick is a really good one to remember because you've got two things. We've got the rhetorical question, eliciting sympathy. You wouldn't swap places with them and therefore we should feel sorry for him. And the metaphor, gorilla with a nightstick. He's unevolved, simplistic. It's very, very dangerous, right? So this idea of you feel sorry for him but he is dangerous. Um, and that final sentence, and who would be who have to be his victims, that the rhetorical question, removing the sympathy for the last time, that reminder of violence and the danger that he poses. Um, so these are the key quotations to leave you with, and I hope that helped, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.